There are a little less than nine months left in 2021. If you're thinking of buying or selling this year, I know a lot, one of the major questions we get besides how's the market, which it's kind of crazy right now, is when do I start that process? Whether you're a buyer or seller, buyers typically ask, well, when do I start getting my approval together? When do I start searching for homes? With sellers, I say, well, when do I start talking to realtors? You know, when do I set up that consultation? What's that timeline look like? So today we're breaking it down month by month. If you're planning on selling, any time between now and the end of 2021. So if you're trying to, your goal is to have your house sold, buy another one, buy and sell, we're gonna look at what should you be doing now? You have eight to nine months before the end of the year, you want to get everything done and settled by Christmas time. So the first, right now, in the first next month or two, this end of spring, is really just make your goals and go over those numbers. So welcome with Breakfast with Bev this morning. I'm Bev Curtis, and you all know Cheryl Maupin. And this morning we're here to try to untangle the events of the process. And when I say untangle, the market is a little messy right now. And it does mean something a little bit different for a seller and a buyer. So as Cheryl just stated, let's start off with the buyer process, kind of a breakdown. First of all, my suggestion is if you are, let's just say a buyer, you do not have a home to sell yet, so you're just in a rental situation and you're wanting to know how do I start that process and what that looks like. The first step that I would tell you to do is visit with the realtor or interview the realtors that you are thinking about using for that process. And normally I would say visit with the lender first in this market, I would actually say visit with a very experienced realtor. And the reason I say experienced is because this is a market of multiple offers. There is certainly a shortage in the inventory that's out there and you have to be tough enough in nature to be able to go out and maybe it'll take one offer if you're lucky. You might be riding on seven or eight homes before you finally get to the finish line. And sometimes we've had some buyers that just said, you know what, this is a little bit more than I can handle. I just want to set it out. You need to take the temperature of the market first for any buyer. Then the next process is if you think that you're ready to tackle it and, and do that, you really need to sit down with a qualified lender because strategizing your offer right now is going to be crucial. Can you put more money down to make your offer look beefier, stronger, a better light to the seller? Not asking for a lot of repair items in inspections or perhaps maybe capping the amount that you ask for. I'm not a fan of eliminating appraisals. I'm not really a fan of eliminating inspections altogether because you have no idea what you're walking into and the seller may not have any idea that there's issues with the home. And so just to leave you wide open, I personally don't think it's in the best interest of the buyer. And it's probably not the most professional way to go about it if you're a buyer's agent. However, if you are a seasoned buyer, you've been through that process before, you have ample cash on hand, you have no problem booting the difference if you know that this is the long-term home that you choose to stay in. There's some variables if you're an experienced buyer and having a nest egg that will help navigate you through some of those pitfalls and will certainly help you beat out some of your competition. Well, in these first few months, you know, if you're looking to buy this year, that's where, you know, making those goals and going over your numbers and your financials because you know, this, even though you might not be looking to buy till fall, it might be a really good time to sit down and say, let's try to save up a little more money because the more cash you have on hand, the stronger your offer is gonna be and it's gonna give you more playroom as far as like putting larger earnest money down or, or being able to, you know, not be nitpicky on inspections and just having money to do little things if you have to just to get the house. So being able to, you know, larger down payments. Those are all things that are gonna make your offer more desirable and um, so now is a good time especially if you have a few months to start thinking how much do I need to save to get to where I can be really competitive when that time comes to start searching. 
Well, and also I think it is, you need to take a little bit of time in that process when you talk to the realtor and talk to the lender. You really need to sit down if it's just you or if you've got a spouse or significant other or family, what is the goal of buying a home? Because this is a market where you really do need to analyze your lifelong situation and your career path. Because if you're going into a market knowing that you're going to be paying higher than the norm, if you're not going to be there long term and there's some iffiness about your job or maybe you desire to be in a different school district for your kids, you really do need to think about that because it needs to be a move of more permanency than it ever has been before. So it's something to really consider. And that's where Cheryl was saying, it's something you just can't dive into head first. There's some methodical planning month after month. And right now we do have a sector of our buyers that we're working with that we're literally in that grooming stage. Let's work on getting your credit score higher so you can get a better interest rate and closing costs. Let's work on saving a little bit more for your closing costs so you don't have to ask the seller to do that. Let's set aside a little bit of money as a little kitty for home improvements and just repair funds so that you do have a nest egg where you do feel more comfortable so that if you choose to buy up since interest rates are lower, you can do that. Month by month, if you kind of analyze those different categories, and that's where it's very beneficial to sit down with a seasoned realtor right up front and guide you because everyone, guys, is at a different place in that process and in their careers and in their financial journey. And so until we really kind of dissect where you are and what your goals that you're trying to achieve, it's going to be a little bit different plan each month for different circumstances. Yeah, so typically it's about 60 to 90 days from the first time we talk to somebody before they we really get serious. And so if you're thinking about, you know, we're shooting for the end of the year, three to four months in, so we're looking at summer by this point, is to for sure get your team together and it's time to start putting the plan into action. So that's when we start kind of, you start getting a feel for homes. We, if you're buying, um, you for sure decide on your lender, you just for sure decide on your realtor and you're communicating with them at all steps of the process. So we're, cause we're getting really close to the time where you're gonna make offers. Now on the selling side, this is the time where we're talking, do we need to groom the property? Do we need to start moving stuff into storage? Because even though you say, oh, I'll be ready in three weeks, I, I guarantee once you start moving stuff into storage, <laughs> it'll probably be another two to month on top of that. So so start way sooner than you want to on that because it never fails. Somebody says, I just need two more weeks. We are, have way more stuff than we anticipated. Yeah. Um, so that would kind of be that summertime. Just it's, it's go time. You're putting the plan into action. You're putting everything you've talked about and you know who your team is. It's going to help get you to that closing table. And your team, as Cheryl just stated, is crucial. You need to have all the players of your realtor, your lender, you know, picking out your inspector, the lender's gonna assist you with the appraiser, who's gonna be your homeowner's insurance agent. You know, you have to think about all the players in the picture and also kind of compiling kind of your A-team that once you move into the home, it's like if I do have a repair or an issue that comes up, who's going to be my service vendor of choice? And that's where we can assist you with that process as well. Yeah, and so then about five to seven months in, this is go time. We're already, you already probably started preliminarily doing searches, your home is ready, so it is time for the buyer to get out there and to start making offers, and it could take a few offers. But again, we started way back now in the spring, so hopefully by fall, we're gonna be very competitive and help you get the home that you want so you don't have to be disappointed and miss out on, you know, if you get in a multiple offer situation. And for sellers, it's time to get the home on the market, start the marketing, um, and, you know, hopefully we're still in the multiple offer situation. And they'll... The trickiness of being a seller right now, and I can say this because we're in the thick of it ourselves, is that we have a number of home sellers that would like to sell their home to either upsize, downsize, whatever their situation is. The issue at hand is if I put my home on the market and we will make you homeless very quickly, where am I going to go if I'm the seller? And so that's where having an experienced realtor that has a long-term client base, um, we have been contacting a lot of our 
previous sellers to say, hey, we have a buyer, would you consider selling? And many times they're like, yes, however, where am I gonna go? So it's kind of one of those things in the back of your mind, it's putting the pieces of the puzzle together, getting everybody lined up so that everybody can perform. And so that's where, from a seller standpoint, in this time period of trying to figure out, well, yes, I do want to move, but I don't know where I want to go yet, or I can't find what I'm looking for, this is where your process starts with having the home assessment. What do I need to do to groom my home for the market? You know, go month by month and make those repairs as necessary. And then we start the searching process for you. It's visiting with your lender to see, do I have to sell my home first? If you are financially sound, this is where the timing would be is if you could do a bridge loan, I would probably encourage you to do that because if we've done the assessment on your home and we know what the market conditions are, more than likely we've already got a couple buyers lined up for your home. It's gonna be perfectly safe for you to go ahead and put, you know, put an offer in on something else, get that secured, and then we'll come back to getting your home on the market and blend the two together. Um, because right now, if you are a seller that has to sell your home first, but you want to go make an offer on something first to get that done and then come back and sell your home, that process is not going to work in today's market. So you, you do have to be prepared and ready to pull the trigger, but you have to do all of your homework and like Cheryl said, the month by month steps that goes into that because we all know moving is very stressful and it's even elevated that much more so in this type of intense market. So the more that we can do and take off of your plate, the better off everyone is. Because mm -hmm. then that leads us to months eight and nine, which would be closing out. And so one of the things, especially this year in getting that process started earlier, even for buyers, if you think a lot of people we see are coming out of leases in the summer and stuff, but really that's not very far because so many sellers are actually encouraging those longer closing periods, mm -hmm. those 60 day closing periods, because they have to find places to go. And so that domino effect, um, we're really seeing the quicker closes aren't necessarily the winning out like they typically mm -hmm. do because a lot of people are just wanting more time to get their ducks in a row. So, you know, if a you're a buyer or even a seller, you can plan on that finish line. We could extend that out 60 to 90 days even just because of the market we're in. We've had a number of sellers this year that have actually accepted lower prices because they got better terms. And the better terms was the flexibility of when they could actually move out and close. And some of it's not even just the closing, it is let me do a rent back for a month or two to buy me a little bit more time. It's more about that physical moving out mm -hmm. and that is kind of exchanged out between the selling price accepting it to be a lower price, so. Yeah. So, you know, if you're thinking about buying or selling anytime in 2021, now would be a good time to just start having those preliminary conversations and seeing you know what your we can we can help set that timeline for you so you don't have to dissect all of this yourself because we just threw a lot of information at you so just call us and you know kind of let's get a timeline for you specifically and um to meet your goals and i do think just from looking at the national trends and reading up on that i don't see this type of market leveling out by next year because that's the big question everybody says oh i'll just won't do it this year and i'll do it next spring I don't see it being much different next year than this year. What interest rates will be, I don't know. It may be a little bit more. It's probably not gonna be anything too dramatic. But the one thing that I think that is really has been a game changer is when the bubble burst years ago in the real estate market, it dramatically affected the building of new construction. And when new construction pretty much ceased, and you know, each year there just wasn't a whole lot of inventory added into the mix. That's where this cumulative effect of the housing shortage started. And so now the building prices have really gone up dramatically and the builder pool of who is building is diminished dramatically. And so that's where we're kind of in this crossfire of, you know, extenuating situations with building prices and labor and just, you know, 
the whole um, construction financing aspect of who can afford to be a builder today type thing and carry the risk. So that's where the new construction gets in the crossfire of all of this existing homes and just continues to drive that price up. So if you're thinking that you're gonna wait it out, I'm not so sure that that's in your best interest either if you really do wanna to buy or sell because as time goes on, prices continue to go up and as those elevate and go up, it does kind of set the new floor for what the pricing is for real estate. And that is truly going on in our local market. So, um, but, but like Cheryl said, reach out to us today here at Bev & Co. And we would be more than happy to visit with you about your situation, buying or selling or both. And we can certainly put our years of experience and, and, and yield you a, a great perspective on where, what do we do and where do we go next. So thanks for joining in guys. We appreciate your time. We'll look forward to seeing you next week.